I didn't turn it off. I didn't turn it off. To all the girls for readily accepting us okay. on these vacations. We all know Paul's long list of medical issues. But when I was going through my own event, Sandy came out to see me in California, where I was admitted, but also to lovingly give Karen some much needed downtime for being the caregiver. A need Sandy well understood. Our twins, Colleen and Daniel, had been with us in California and flew back, flew back home at age 15 to an empty house. So during this time, Paul flew to Crozet, Virginia to stay with them for a few weeks, to cook for them, to talk to them, to look after them, to just be there for them and for us. And this part is almost beyond comprehension. Paul took them out on driving lessons <laughs> so they could get their permits and licenses like their friends were doing. Who does this? Who needs that aggravation? He'd been there and done that, but that was Paul. He was generous and enjoyed it. Look, I'm retired. So one of my daily chores is walking our dog, Pacey, who sadly, like most of us, isn't quite as mobile as we used to be. And as with most of what I do, my daily walks require a soundtrack, a Spotify playlist of the Beatles, Stones, Springsteen, the Doobies, Bonnie Raitt, a long list of rockers. And lately, I've found myself drawn to the lyrics of the Beatles' Let It Be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. Just makes me think of Paul. He was many things, but undeniably he was a man of words. Precisely spoken and written words. He was an English major, it was in his DNA. In his long, distinguished career in HR and as a trainer, he listened and gave thoughtful guidance that can only come from experience, knowledge, and caring. Paul always cared. He didn't hesitate when our son Daniel, after graduating at the height of COVID, sought some career advice. Well, Paul knew Daniel's interests and abilities and graciously gave carefully considered wisdom, which of course was incredibly beneficial, given without any thought of return. Just Paul being Paul. On Paul's playlist, I'm not sure there would be many rockers. He was a jazz guy. Keith Jarrett moaning away while on some journey on his piano was more in his wheelhouse. At the Cape last fall, Sandy and Paul went to this Brazilian style jazz concert, and Sandy tells how Paul was just lost in the moment, transported. And that's what the best art will do for you. You make some emotional connection, and it takes you to a place you can't get to on your own. Paul's sensibility for jazz explains for me his particular love and affinity for pottery and painting and sculpting. This flowing yet disciplined creative process taking you somewhere and that destination might change over time. And just like in his journals and in his poetry, a small example of which we have today, these were all ways for him to try and navigate some of life's great mysteries and pleasures. He found tranquility, comfort, and a release, and enjoyed the journey, all at his essence. Let me close by saying I believe Paul Simmerer was an old soul. He embraced people and places out of his comfort zone making him joyful, stronger, and wiser. <clears throat> Clearly, he knew this. 
when he would come to visit us in Virginia, he often said that the Blue Ridge Mountains spoke to him, like he had lived there before. Some yearning, some sense of coming home, some Native American spirit in him? I don't know, but he would tear up speaking of that possibility. It was real to him. Paul was so many things, and passionate about so many things, that no one thing jumps out. He wasn't a wild and crazy guy. Sure, he had his moments, breaking out some bottle of 100-year-old scotch saying, you've got to try this, or grilling enough brats, chops, and steaks to feed a family of 40 when there were only six of us. And we were all witness to those crazy, inclusive moments. But I think of Paul as the sum of so many small and seemingly inconsequential things which can be taken for granted in a good and full life, creating lasting and meaningful moments in other lives, a legacy of memories for those of us who have had the great joy and privilege of being a part of his life. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. The universe smiled on all of us when it gave us Paul. <laughs>